A while back, I did a video called Learn ZBrush in 12 Minutes. In this video, I'm going to go over all the main functionality of the program and show you even more in just eight minutes. Even if you're a complete beginner with zero experience, you'll be able to get started on projects of your own right away. There is a huge amount of information to cover in this video, so let's get started. If you haven't already downloaded ZBrush, you can go to the Pixelogic website, click on Try ZBrush, and download a free 30-day trial. When you first open up ZBrush, you get this splash image, you can just close that, and the light box is open, you can just click where it says light box and close that as well. At first, it looks like there's a lot of information going on here, but don't worry, we're gonna go over the most important menus first. In the right side divider, you have your tool menu. This is where most of your functionality is stored inside of ZBrush. If you click this little wheelie icon in the top right, the menu disappears, but fear not, any of the menus up at the top can be clicked and dragged and dropped in either the right side divider or you can go to the left, double click that divider to open it and menus can be dropped here as well. So if you ever lose any of your menus, you can just click and drag that wheel icon and drop it on the right or the left hand side. To create a 3D object in your scene, first go over to the right on the tool menu and select the simple brush. Pick any of the 3D objects in the top half. Don't worry about the bottom half. Those are two and a half D objects and we're not gonna worry about them today. So choose any of these objects like this cube. Click and drag anywhere in the canvas to draw one cube. If you mess up and you draw more than one cube, you can press control N on your keyboard to clear it and try again. Once you've drawn one cube, go up to the left and turn edit mode on or press T on your keyboard. Go over to the tool menu on the right and select make poly mesh 3D. Now press X to turn on symmetry. Click on the brush menu on the left hand side or select a brush by pressing B on your keyboard. Press the alphabetical letter for whichever brush you're looking for and then use the shortcut for that brush and start sculpting. If you mess anything up, just hit control Z to undo it. And there's actually a timeline of your undo history right here along the top of your viewport that you can slide backward at any point in time. Now, if you're new to ZBrush, you might have trouble sculpting if you aren't familiar with navigating in 3D space. If you click anywhere on your canvas outside of your object, it will rotate around in 3D space. Hold Alt and then click and drag to pan your object from side to side. Now zooming in ZBrush is a little different. All you have to do is let go of Alt while you're panning and your camera will zoom in and out when you move your cursor. If you're rotating and you hold Shift, it will snap to the closest side view as you can see by this little head in the upper right hand corner. And last, you can turn on the floor to see where your object is positioned in 3D space. And below that is solo mode, which you can use to just see one subtool or one object at a time. If you're using a tablet to sculpt with, which I highly recommend, you're gonna want to go to preferences, go down to tablet and turn use tablet on. Otherwise, you're gonna spend all of your time adjusting your brush size and your intensity with this little slider up here, which takes forever. Even buying a simple $50 tablet from Expo Pen or Huion saves you so much time. You can sculpt using your mouse, but it's not gonna give you the the same level of control that a pen does with that pressure sensitivity. To change your brush size, press S on your keyboard and use the slider or press space and you have a load of other options here. Notice at the top here we have Z add and Z sub. Each brush is preset to either add or subtract geometry. By default, the clay buildup brush has Z add turned on. All you have to do is hold alt and it will flip to Z sub and now you're subtracting geometry. This can be applied to most brushes, so try it out with every brush and see what it does. Nice. Just below your brush palette on the left, you have your stroke and your alpha. When you change the stroke, or the alpha for a brush, it only changes it for the current brush that you're using. Your brush stroke can be left alone for the most part, unless you want to start putting on cool decals, in which case you can select the drag rectangle for your stroke, then go down to alpha to pick something that looks really cool and try dragging it out on your mesh. Next, we're going to talk about masking. When you mask a part of your object, it just means that it can't be sculpted on. To mask part of your object, hold control and click and drag this box over any part of your object. That part is now masked and cannot be sculpted on. Hold control and click one time on your mesh to soften the edge of your mask so that it's not as harsh and you can do this as many times as you want or hold control and alt and then click on your mesh to sharpen the edge of the mask and make it stronger and to clear your mask just hold control click and drag outside of your object and now your object is completely unmasked wow if you press w on your keyboard or go up to the top left and turn move mode on you get this little 3d gizmo now you can switch back to draw mode by pressing q on your keyboard or you can switch those options with these buttons here at the top you can use this to move scale and rotate your object around in 3d space if you hold alt and click and drag on the gizmo it will move the gizmo itself. Now when you rotate your object, your object will pivot off of the location of the gizmo. If you move your gizmo out of the way and you need it back in the center of your object, press the Google Maps checkpoint looking icon on the top, which is actually called go to unmasked mesh center. If you have symmetry turned on, your gizmo might not snap to the center of your object, so press X on your keyboard to turn symmetry off, then go to unmasked mesh center, and your gizmo should be right in the center of your object. If you move your object way off in space and you need to bring it back to the center of the world space, simply click the home button on your gizmo and it will take your object back to the world center. Nice! All right, that covers all the basics. Now let's look at the tool menu. The tool menu is the most important menu in ZBrush. It's it's the menu that comes pre-docked on the right hand side when you first open the program. Under the main tool menu on the right, you can see all the objects in your scene by clicking the sub-tool menu. 
Right now I only have one subtool on my list. I can add a new subtool into my scene by opening the subtool menu, going down to append, and selecting a 3D object like we did before. The difference is now, when I click this, because I've already told ZBrush to make it a 3D object, now I don't have to do that again. So when I append in a new object like this sphere, it automatically becomes a 3D object and I don't have to click Make Poly Mesh 3D. Now that you have multiple subtools, you can switch between them by clicking on whichever one you want in your subtool list or by holding Alt and clicking on whichever one you want in your viewport. When you have a subtool selected, you're only affecting that specific subtool and nothing else. You can change the order of your subtools with these little up or down arrows. If you have a lot of subtools, you can send one of them to the top or the bottom of the list by holding Shift and then clicking the up or down arrow. If you scroll down in your subtool menu, you can duplicate or delete subtools. You can also hide any subtool by clicking the little eyeball icon next to it in your subtool list. Just remember that if if you have a subtool selected, it will show up in your viewport even if it's hidden. Something important to remember is if you delete an object in your scene, it is gone forever. You can't press Ctrl Z, you can't go back, it is gone, unless you've saved which is something that I should probably talk about. ZBrush allows you to save your files a couple of different ways. You can either export your current subtool as an OBJ or go to File, Save As, and save it as a Z project. Saving as a Z project does save you a lot of time. It does take up more space on your computer, but it saves all of the subtools, all of the presets, and anything you have set up in your scene. Now that you know how to save your project, I want to talk about a few shortcuts that'll help you work even faster. If you mask a part of your object and go to the visibility menu on the right hand side, you can hit hide part and this hides the unmasked portion of your object. You can do the same thing by holding control and shift and clicking and dragging this big green box over any part of your current subtool. It will only show what is inside of the green box and it will hide everything else on your subtool. If you hold control and shift and click and drag outside of your object again, it will flip whatever is showing to the opposite. At this point, you're probably wondering why is this useful? The reason this is useful is because you can work in a powerful way to control your object using poly groups. If you mask any area of your subtool and press Ctrl W on your keyboard, it will change the vertex data of that section to its own unique color. You can see these colors by turning on the poly frame button on the right hand side of the viewport. And if you separate one subtool into different pieces using poly groups, you can isolate those pieces and work on them one by one by holding Ctrl and Shift and clicking on that poly group. Now everything else on your subtool is hidden and you can just polish that one part of your mesh. To bring everything back, just hold Ctrl and Shift and click outside of your object. Now there's one more thing about polygroups that's kind of confusing, but I want to explain this because it took me a long time to figure this out. If you hold Ctrl and Shift and you click on one polygroup, it will show just that polygroup. Now if you hold Ctrl and Shift, click and drag the green box outside of your object, it will flip and show the opposite of whatever you had selected. Now, because you've flipped your view, when you hold Ctrl and Shift, if you click on a polygroup, it will hide whatever polygroup you click on. This is a quick and powerful way to have complete control over your object. Using polygroups just gives you that much more control so you can get your sculpts looking beautiful and finished. Did we do it? I think we did it. I think we did it in eight minutes. Ooh. So what do you do now that you have all this information and you want to start a project? You can start off by appending in a new object into your scene like I showed you before. The most important thing you want to do when you start any project is block out all your major shapes. This isn't the only way to do it, but it is really helpful if you're first starting out. You can append in as many subtools as you want and you can shape each one of them into a different part of the body or whatever it is that you're trying to make. Blocking out is going to give you 100% control over how you create your object and it gives you a lot more practice working on all the individual parts. If you like creating characters like I do, chances are you're going to have to start practicing how to do faces. And if that's the case, you're going to want to watch this video next, which is going to show you a step-by-step -step process for creating faces in ZBrush. Guys, if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and a comment down below to help my channel out. Don't forget to turn on notifications to see when I come up with new stuff. But until, but until next, next time... time.